Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Deep Fat Fucking Fried. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So last week, uh, or last, uh, not last week, but last episode, we talked, episode. we talked about uh, The Simpsons, talked about its cultural impact, talked about how it became one of the most influential TV shows of all time and how it lost its luster. Today, I'd like to explore a different aspect of the show like to uh, look at the insane amounts of classic and instantly recognizable characters that the show uh, generated, uh, especially, well, not not even especially, but exclusively in its earlier seasons. So let's take a look at some of these characters. Uh, let's start with the main cast. Generally considered the protagonist of The Simpsons, the main character, is, in as much as there is a main character, is this portly fellow here. Good old Homer. Yeah. You know, when I read stuff about how, you know, like Homer's uh, weight is supposed to be around like 240 pounds, I'm like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm way fatter than Homer. That's crazy. Yeah, dude, I'm fatter than Homer Simpson. Fuck. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, so this is Homer J. Simpson. He's the main protagonist of the series. Like like I said, in as much as it has one. Uh, he's the spouse of Marge Simpson. He's the father of Barton Lisa Simpson and Maggie Simpson. Uh, his defining character traits is that he's overweight, but not as overweight as me and Paul. <laughs> he is uh, lazy, but not as lazy as me and Paul, because, uh, you know, he gets in some fucking adventures. And he's uh, often ignorant of the world around him, which uh, I envy him that. That'd be fun. Homer works as a low-level safety inspector at the Springfield Nuclear Power Plant in Sector 7G. Uh, the fact that he's a safety inspector, by the way, is kind of hilarious. Although he is often incompetent and negligent towards his duty, he spends a great deal of his time at Moe's Tavern with his lifelong friends Barney, Carl, and Lenny, and the bartender Moe, all of those characters we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, when he's at home, you can often find him on the couch, mindlessly watching TV and snacking on uh, you know, whatever food happens to be available, as well as drinking copious amounts of Duff beer. <laughs> So basically, uh, Homer Simpson is just, I mean, like, really, he's kind of the typical American male. I mean, he's fat, stupid, and drinks, and just watches TV. Yeah, um, he's the fucking prototypical eight, late 80s, 90s American male. I, I don't really feel like much has changed. Maybe maybe replace TV with, like, some video games and stuff, but other than that, yeah, you know. Yeah, ch change that to Xbox, and now he's drinking the, that zero-calorie <laughs> calorie flavored beer or whatever the fuck it's called, the sangrias yeah. or whatever. So you I make, mean, there's a, there's a lot that's changed. I mean, the whole neighborhood bar thing is no longer a trope like it used to be. That's true. Yeah, that's true. People don't go to the, the local... I mean, people still go to bars, but they there's still do not really they go to gastro pubs and shit. Yeah. They go to fucking little hipster spots, you know, but That's most tavern is a is a fucking dive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a total dive bar. And, uh, you know, that's not as big a thing anymore. And uh, the quote, I pulled a quote from Homer here. There's actually endless amounts of great Homer Simpson quotes, but this is my favorite. And it deals with his drinking issue to alcohol, the cause of and solution to all life's problems. And uh, so he's a heavy drinker, kind of downplaying a horrible family destroying aspect of American life. Yes. Uh, the more you really kind of think about the character of Homer Simpson and how much he drinks, you kind of realize Homer is a Homer has a serious alcoholism problem. I mean, there's no there's no yes. two way around. I mean, you kind it kind of is taken less seriously because he's such a ridiculous character. But um, yeah, he's a drunk. But, it, it, you know, it, it works for The Simpsons because it allows you to laugh at something that if you're dealing with it, especially in your personal life, is no laughing matter. You know, and, uh, I mean? you know he's kind of he's always kind of uh, you always kind of have uh, Barney to compare him to because Barney is the character that's like the true drunk, I guess. The non-functional alcoholic. Right. So Homer is, a, a f I guess, somewhat functional alcoholic. Um, but even Barney has a job, doesn't he? Um, Barney has been seen working various jobs at various times throughout the, uh, the show's history. You know, uh, it's, it's probably the, the closest, uh, that I've seen. Well, no, he got fired from that job. Well, he did the Mr. Plow thing for a while. Uh, he worked at a bowling alley for a little while, but I think he lost that job. Um, well, he's an alcoholic, you know, <laughs> you so know, he, he, he kind of, it kind of portrays him as working various odd jobs uh, around town. So here's a little bit of here's a, uh, an interesting fact about Homer. Um, he is the only character to have a speaking role in every single episode of The Simpsons. No other character can make that claim. 
So there's never been a single episode of The Simpsons that Homer was not in. Yeah, there's never been a single episode that wasn't in that he didn't have a speaking role in. There've well, been. It's hard to argue he's not the main character then. I mean, if he's that, that's a uh, uniquely stands out. Uh, right. Over, I mean, like in this in the Simpsons ecosystem, I mean, there's so many fucking characters. It's insane. And for I mean, him, number one in the world of the you know. 70s and 80s sitcom that this is the, the Simpsons clearly is aping there. You know, he's the dad. He's the Archie bunker. Yeah, he he's the Dr. Cosby. Yes, you know, uh, so. oh, Paul, Paul, Paul. Sorry, I, I forgot. You can't mention Cosby anymore. He doesn't exist. It never happened. Uh, so here's his wife, Marjorie Jacqueline Marge Simpson, you know, whose uh, uh, maiden name was Bouvier. She is a homemaker and full-time mom to the Simpsons kids. Uh, she and her husband, Homer, have three children, Bart, Lisa, and Maggie. Marge is the moralistic force in the family and often provides a grounding voice in the midst of her family's antics by trying to maintain order in the Simpson household, usually uh, pretty unsuccessfully. And, uh, you know, the, I, I did pull a quote for her as well. <laughs> it was one of the, the lines that I remember really tickling me uh, at the time. Is the quote, Mm, homie. That's a good one, too. Uh, pretty good impression, by the way. Actually, I think you do it better than Julie Kavner at this point. She said, you know, Fox turned into a hardcore sex channel so gradually I didn't even notice. You know what? One of the one of the the moments in that horrible episode that you made us watch with Lady Gaga in it that I did find funny yeah. was when Lady Gaga kissed Marge and it made her so horny she had to go fuck Homer. That, I was I, like, that actually was kind of cool. I was like, okay, that's okay. That's fine. You're right. I do remember that. Um, I remember growing up, dude. Like, I didn't like the character of Marge because it reminded me way too much of my own mom. I was like, no, I don't like that. That was like the nagging character, you know. Like, if, from my point of view, it was like that's like my mom telling me what to do. So of course, I was like, oh, I don't like that character. But I definitely grew up, as I grew up more of an appreciation for the character. The yeah. Show. No one wants to see no no. You know, a mom character can be kind of hard to write in a way that's not annoying because moms, you know, and why like you either when you're a kid, you view Marge as like the mom. When you're you grow up, you view Marge as the wife. And in both instances, she's kind of like, ah! you know, so it's like, OK. But, you know, when you look at when you really take a solid look at the family she's dealing with, you're kind of like, OK, I can really kind of see why she has to be like that. She's the voice of reason. Generally. Um, so uh, here's the tri here's the thing, uh, the trivia I pulled for her, including her hair. Marge is uh, eight foot six. Wow. She's eight foot six. Yeah. Like an Amazon, dude. <laughs> when, Damn. when you include her hair, uh, obviously, uh, you know, aside from that, she's not, you know, particularly tall. The next character. And uh, by the way, I would say the former main character, of the Simpsons, because if you actually look at the first three seasons, they're much more focused on Bart than later seasons were. And Bart was really the uh, the breakout, the initial breakout popular character on the show. I think Homer has kind of uh, usurped him. Uh, you know, in the intervening years, but uh, he was definitely the most quotable character. I don't have a cow, man. Uh, and you know, all, it's, my shorts. It's kind of a. Uh, it's kind of interesting that all. Like one thing that you notice about all the Simpsons characters is pretty much all of them have like all the major characters have some sort of catchphrase associated with them. Usually multiple. Uh, with Bart, you know, it's I caramba don't have a cow, man. Eat my shorts. You know, eat my shorts, which was lifted from the Breakfast Club, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. John it? Bender says it in the Bre Breakfast Club. So Bart is, uh, he's your typical fucking, he's just like an update on like the Dennis the Menace trope, kind of. Like he's mischievous, he's rebellious, misunderstood, disruptive, uh, dangerous, in a, you know, kind of, you know, he's obviously not like the kind of dangerous he's going to like whip out a switchblade and stab you in the fucking eyeball or something, but you know. Well, his, you know, kind of acting out because he's kind of like the underachiever of his family, kind of much right. like his dad. He represents true moral flexibility in the show. Like, he's not a dude that's going to go out and kill somebody, but he's pretty much willing to subvert any social norm for personal gain. That's true. You know, Bart is a dude that if you look at him for what he is, he might be dangerous as an adult. You right. know what I mean? Potentially. Um, so a uh, little bit of trivia on Bart. Uh, in the Tracy Ullman shorts, the number of uh, Bart spikes on his hair kept changing. Uh, when so when the actual show began, they had to just settle, and they decided on nine. So that Bart, Bart has nine spikes atop uh, his head. Yeah, he had way fewer, didn't he, in the early ones? Uh, like three, sometimes more. Really? 
Yeah, like a lot, a lot of times you look at it, it's just like a series of like super jagged, you know, kind of up and down lines. Lisa, the eldest daughter uh, and the middle child of the Simpsons uh, family. Lisa was named after a train called Lil Lisa on her parents' first anniversary. She is a charismatic eight-year-old girl who exceeds the standard achievement of the intelligence level of children her age. Uh, not to everyone's surprise, she is the moral center of her family. In her upbringing, Lisa uh, lacks parental involvement of uh, Homer and Marge, which leads to hobbies such as playing saxophone or guitar, uh, riding and caring for horses, uh, and interest in advanced studies. In school, Lisa's popularity is affected by those who view her as a geeky overachiever, which leaves her with a few friends. Uh, she focuses on her goals and strives to reach her potential. And at the age of eight, she is already a member of Mensa with an IQ of 159. Dude, she's like this show's. She's like the fucking Simpsons Wesley, dude. Just like Wesley. Every, every time there's like some like like hey super genius thing, they're gonna put Lisa in that role. I mean, you kind of have to. I mean, when she like and like she's talented in so many facets that it's kind of just the character that if they really need a character that can. I mean, almost be. I mean, Homer's versatile in, in a different way. Like he's he's like the slapstick guy that can do have do like a crazy project. But if they have the super smart character, that's what the role she obviously fills in the show. Generally, she's yeah. she's the bright mirror of dark uh, of Bart Simpson. Yeah, where he is an underachiever, she's an overachiever. Where he is morally flexible, she's morally rigid to her detriment. Um, you know, where Bart is looking to take advantage of people. She has a genuine desire to help people. They even have a great episode where it's like they do the parent teacher conference and Homer, of course, is like, can I please have Lisa? You know, <laughs> and Marge, of course, uh, has to go into Bart's uh, conference. And of course, that doesn't oh, yeah. play out uh, very well. Uh, also, she has uh, the dilemma about being a vegetarian because obviously a bunch of people are against her. Like, oh, you shouldn't be a vegetarian. You know, which is, I thought at the time was a much bigger issue. And uh, it was basically, I think it was Paul McCartney who said that he would come on the show uh, and uh, on that ep vegetarian, because he's a vegetarian. He would only do the vegetarian, he would only do the episode if the writers promised to, you know, consistently, sorry, what the hell, <laughs> consistently keep her a vegetarian and not, uh, you know, let it be one of these things that's reset, you know, when the next episode starts, basically. And to my knowledge, they did. Uh, yeah, they haven't. They they've never gone back on it or anything. Like now, Lisa eats fucking hamburgers or whatever the fuck. Um, so I I was pulling kind of little mini bios for these characters and uh, some facts, but when I started to get into the peripheral characters, I was like, there is way too many of these to even do that. So uh, let's just kind of get into some of these other characters. Uh, I didn't bother to pull Maggie. We could talk about Maggie if you want, though. Because she is technically a member of the Simpsons cast, and she has somewhat of a personality, um, but it's She's not kind of the hardest character to imbue with a personality, and right, manage to do it, which says a lot. It's a, I mean, you know, she's a baby, so. But you know, but they give Maggie her moments. Maggie will be pissed off or something. She'll point her pacifier at them, like, "Hey!" So she um, sometimes is actually a moral character, a moral agent in the story. Like if they're doing something bad, Maggie can react to that in a way. I mean, she mainly just likes to do like a little kid or a little baby does. She just crawls around and kind of does her own little thing. But she does have moments like that, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm just, you know, there's not really a lot that, you know, I, I don't I don't have oh, any like I don't have any Maggie quotes <laughs> or anything, you know, because she doesn't have any. She just sucks on her pacifier. Yeah, hey, there's a Maggie quote for you. Oh, uh, interesting thing about Lisa, by the way, uh, the, the trivia I pulled for her was that um, uh, she um, is the only Simpson uh, member of the Simpson family who does not incorporate the color blue into her design. Oh, because if you I notice, see. Uh, let's be if you notice here, Homer's uh, pants are blue. Marge's hair is blue. Bart's shorts and shoes are blue. Maggie's pretty much entire outfit is blue. And Lisa has uh, no blue in her design whatsoever. So, never noticed that. That's, That's interesting. A, that was some. That was a conscious choice uh, on the part of the designers to kind of set her apart from the rest of the family. Um, you know, and and she is probably the least Simpson of the Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, she does seem like an alien in the family for sure. Uh, so this is uh, another member of the Simpson family. This is uh, Abraham Simpson, Grandpa Simpson. Um, who is, uh, you know, uh, he, he, he's basically just a, uh, 
he's an, his main character trait is that he's old. I mean, there's really not much else. He's a crotchety old on. man. Yeah, I mean, like he uh, probably my favorite line from him was uh, when he started getting um, basically the Bart and Lisa wrote uh, an episode of a uh, of Itchy and Scratchy to try to get it uh, made, and uh, the, it wasn't taken seriously, so they decided to put an adult's name on it, and they chose to use uh, Abraham here. And um, so uh, the, the script was accepted and, you know, they started sending uh, Abraham checks and, you know, Bart and Lisa are like, didn't you uh, get suspicious when you started getting money for free? And he's like, no, nah, I just figured it was because the Democrats are back in power. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, he, he you know, he's, he's characterized by like, you know, long meandering sort of, uh, you know, speeches about the old times and telling meaningless stories and, you uh, having flashbacks and like passing out on the couch. Like he's supposed to be watching the kids like grandpa's going to watch you. And of course grandpa's head hits the back of the couch and the kids do whatever they want. He's like a, he's like a good representation. I think of real old men, a lot of it is doddering meandering nonsense, but there's some, you know, brief moments of blunt wisdom that come with it. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, uh, you know, moments of lucidity, uh, basically, <laughs> I <laughs> just I, I keep seeing Joe Biden when I'm looking at him right now. We're talking about this, uh, man. Don't put down Abraham. I know with that comparison. It is, it is mean. Uh, yeah, that's wrong. As dude. far as Come I know, on. Abraham never pushed a woman against a wall and fingered her against her will. So you know. Then again, I don't know for sure that Joe Biden did that either. Allegedly, yeah. 